previous points. Um, sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, he will not despise. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Peter is here to pray for us as we sing our first hymn, Jesus, Lover of the Lord. Let me to thy bosom fly while the near waters flow, while the tempest still is high. Hide me, O oh my Savior, hide till the storm of life is past, safe into the haven guide. Oh, receive my soul at last. Other My helpless soul on thee. Leave, ah, leave me not alone. Still support and comfort me. All my trust on thee is great. All my help from thee I pray. Under my defenseless head, with the shadow of thy wing. Thou, O Christ, art all I more than all in thee I fly. Raise the fallen, cheer the faint, heal the sick, and lead the blind. Just and holy is thy name. I am all unrighteous and sin of sin I am. Thou art full of truth and grace. Plenteous grace with thee is found. Brothers and sisters in Christ, 
Since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection. It became the custom of the church to prepare for this by a season of penitence and fasting. At first, this season of Lent was observed by those who were preparing for baptism at Easter and by those who were to be restored to the church's fellowship from which they had been separated through sin. In course of time, the church came to recognize that by a careful keeping of these days, all Christians might take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel, and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. So we say together, Holy God, our lives are laid open before you. Rescue us from the chaos of sin, and through the death of your Son, bring us healing and make us whole. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we're going to say Psalm 51, responsorium. I'll read the odd-numbered verses. Would you respond, please, with the even number? Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. So that you are justified in your sentence, and righteous in your judgment. Behold, you desire truth deep within me, and shall make me understand wisdom in the depths of my heart. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Give me again the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. The Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your words. For you desire no sacrifice, else I would give it. You take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So we have our first reading, thank you, Jenna. First reading is from 2 Corinthians 5 20. There we go. The first reading is from 2 Corinthians 5 verses 20b and 6 to 10. Ambassadors for Christ. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us 
so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's follow, fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favour I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favour, now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience and kindness, in the Holy Spirit and in sincere love, in truthful speech and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left hand. Through glory and dishonour, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, Sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Poor, yet making many rich. Having nothing, and yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. So we stand now to sing, When the Music Fades. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for the song in itself is not what you have to find. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. Nothing of endless work, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song. For the song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. All about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, all about you, Jesus.
praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise, praise to, to you, you O Christ, Christ King, King of eternal glory. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to Christ, Christ our Saviour. Then each one went to their own home. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered round him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, o Christ. Christ. Now speak in the name of the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please be seated? Ash Wednesday, down the ages, has been a day of fasting and contrition and sets the tone for the 40 days which are to follow, days of penitence, abstinence and prayer. As Lent begins, we're called to examine ourselves and allow the Holy Spirit to show us those things in our lives which separate us from God and bring those things to the foot of the cross. The words of the introduction to the Ash Wednesday service, which were used at the beginning, remind us that penitence and fasting are the traditional way in which the church down the ages has prepared for our Lord's Passion. It says, by carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospel, and so, grow in faith and in devotion to the Lord. It goes on to invite us in the name of the church to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer and fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's word. But what about the first part of that introduction? which refers to the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness. In our Gospel reading, the scribes and the Pharisees confronted Jesus with a woman who was caught in the very act of breaking one of the Ten Commandments. These laws, given by God to Moses, during the Hebrew people's wilderness wanderings, became the rules which governed their communal lives. As time went on, the laws set out in these Ten Commandments, do not steal, do not commit adultery, do not murder, etc., were expanded. So actually, by the time of Jesus, there were some 613-odd laws. 
which a good Jew was expected to keep. One law, for example, forbade boiling a calf in its mother's milk, and observant Jews today still take care not to mix meat and milk. Another directs a Jew to make a parapet for his roof to avoid someone falling over, and another not to decide a case on the evidence of a single witness. To keep all 613 laws which had emerged was a colossal task, which it was virtually impossible to adhere to. The women's accusers were legal experts, zealots, self-righteous and baying for punishment. But Jesus stops them in their tracks. He doesn't tell them not to punish the woman. He simply challenges them to examine their own lives and judge whether they were completely sinless. Not one of them was able to say they had never done any wrong. And they, one by one, slipped away. Only when all the accused, accusers has drift, have drifted off does Jesus confront the woman. First, he draws the woman's attention to the fact that not one of these self-righteous men remained to convict her and then pronounced, neither do I condemn you. But this was not a simple dismissal of her wrongdoing. Jesus didn't say the sin didn't matter. His justice does not condone the sin, even though in his mercy he forgives the sinner. For the woman, there both lay a command and a challenge. Go and sin no more. It's a mistake to interpret this story as though sin is unimportant since forgiveness doesn't operate in a moral vacuum. There's still right and wrong and the sin is not to be glossed over. To receive the Lord's mercy means living hereafter for the Lord's glory. Mercy from God calls for life to God. And here's the challenge. Give up the old ways and take on a new and better way of living. For most of us, the idea of giving up something for Lent is a challenge in itself. First is the challenge of deciding what to give up. Then the challenge of keeping up the discipline for six long weeks, but perhaps the greatest challenge of all is trying to focus not on the item we're depriving ourselves of, but on God. So that through the 40 days of discipline and self-denial, we grow spiritually. As we begin Lent and move towards Christ's passion and crucifixion, we need to remember again that the price for sin was paid once for all on the cross. The sin of the woman in our gospel story and for our sin. Sin is something we prefer not to talk about and probably not think about either. Each time we come to a service, as we say words of confession, asking for forgiveness for the things that we have done wrong and receive absolution, the reassurance of God's forgiveness. But how carefully do we think about what we have done wrong? The ways in which we have marred God's image in us. The things we have thought or said or done, which have harmed our relationship with our fellow human beings and with God. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of Lent. The ash of Ash Wednesday implies something destroyed, demolished, gone. 
Not only destroyed are the palms of last year's Palm Sunday's palms, but also destroyed was the life of a person, a man, a figure we can never fully even begin to comprehend, Jesus. The question that confronts us on Ash Wednesday is whether we have what it takes to journey both as individuals and collectively as communities of faith into the whole knowledge that Good Friday confronts us with. From the ashes of last year's palm crosses, the ashes of our heartbreak and defeat, our unmet expectations and broken dreams, the ashes of our knowledge that we fall short. From the ashes, God's voice calls us to turn and travel the painful journey to the cross. We don't travel alone. We travel with Jesus who has what it takes to enter into truth. As Lent begins, we are called to examine ourselves and allow the Holy Spirit to show us those things in our lives which separate us from God, which mar his image in us, which prevent us from becoming more like him and growing deeper into his love. Tonight, we are each called to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. Amen. Um, thank you. <clears throat> so we remain seated or kneel. Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. God the Father, have mercy on us. God the Son, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy, blessed and glorious Trinity, have mercy on us. From all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred and malice, and from all evil intent, good Lord, deliver us. From sloth, worldliness and love of money, from hardness of hearts and contempt for your word and your laws, good Lord, deliver us from sins of body and mind, from the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil, good Lord, deliver us. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of death and at the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood, and obedience, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, good Lord, deliver us. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power, and by your preaching of the kingdom, good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial, Good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit, good Lord, deliver us. Give us true repentance. Forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance and our deliberate sins, and grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your holy word. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Make our hearts clean, O God. 
and renew a right spirit within us. We say together, Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. As a sign of the spirit of penitence with which we shall keep this season of preparation for Easter, I invite you to receive on your head in ash the sign of the cross, the symbol of our salvation. God our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our penitence and a symbol of our mortality. For it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Remember that you are the substitution. For the world can soon and be faithful to it.
God our Father, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Father. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For those preparing for baptism and confirmation, and for their teachers and sponsors, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For those who we have injured or offended, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. In communion with all those who have walked in the way of holiness, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. God, our Father, in your love and goodness, you have taught us to come close to you in penitence with prayer, fasting, and generosity. Accept our Lenten discipline, and when we fall by our weakness, raise us up by your unfailing mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Do you please stand? Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So let's offer one another a sign of peace. We remain standing to sing, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
service find in deep reverence praise in deep reverence praise in simple trust like theirs who heard beside the Syrian sea the gracious calling of the Lord, let us, like them, without a word, rise up and follow thee. Rise up and follow thee. O Sabbath rest by Galilee, O come of hills above, where Jesus knelt to share with thee the silence of eternity, interpreted by love, interpreted by love. Drop thy still dews of quietness till all our striving cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. The beauty of thy peace. Breathe through the heats of our desire, thy coolness and thy balm. Let sense be dumb, let flesh retire, speak through the earthquake. Wind and fire, O oh, still small voice of calm, O oh, still small voice of calm. The Lord is here, His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks, because you give us the spirit of discipline, that we may triumph over evil and grow in grace, as we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mystery with mind and heart renewed. Therefore, with angels, archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we share together this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our notice is there for the rest of this week. Do join us if you're able tomorrow morning for coffee and chat in the North Room. And next Sunday or Sunday morning, we're here, 10 a.m. And as um, Diana said, on um, in the afternoon at 2 o'clock at Crown Meadow Court, the service there will be a memorial service for... Uh, Mary Shaddock, who was one of the residents there. And if you're able to join us, please do. Let's stand to sing our final hymn. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. Heavenly Father, lead us for the world's tempestuous sea. Guard us, guide us, keep us, feed us, for we have no help but Thee. Yet possessing every blessing, if our God, our guide shall be. Saviour, breathe forgiveness on us, all our weakness thou dost know. Thou didst tread this earth before us, thou didst feel its keenest woe, lone and dreary, faint and weary, through the desert thou didst go. Spirit of our God descending, fill our hearts with heavenly joy, love with every passion blending, pleasure that can never cloy, thus provided, hardened, guided, nothing can a peace destroyed. God our Father, your Son is our peace and his cross the sign of reconciliation. Help us who share the broken bread to bring together what is scattered and to bind up what is wounded, that Christ may bring in the everlasting kingdom of his peace who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen.
So may Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow him. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and with all whom you love, now and always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.